Well, welcome. Tonight we're going to talk about an area in Milford that a lot of us never even think about or don't want to think about. A lot of people don't even know exists. The Vernon Grove Cemetery. So first, let's start with an introduction. How you doing? Uh, my name is Jamie Lucchini. I'm chairman of the Vernon Grove Board of Trustees, and I've been on that committee now for, oh, it's got to be a dozen years at this point, believe it or not. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. I remember when you first came on. Yes. Because there was, we'll talk about, there was a little bit of turmoil every oh. year before that. <laughs> I remember the, cemetery, yes. the, the challenge was, don't surprise us anymore. Yeah. Well, since then, I hope we've... Uh, pleased we haven't heard anything, so it's been all long planned. No news is good news from our end. First thing that I have to ask, what is a Vernon Grove Cemetery? <laughs> well, Vernon Grove is a, it was a grove at the end of Vernon Street, and they decided it was a good place for a cemetery many, many moons before me and you were here, and they actually transplanted some other cemeteries in town. It used to be where the library is now, and then it moved over to Claflin Hill, and they ended up down off of Vernon Street because in a uh, river flood area, it was a perfect area for a cemetery. Better digging. But now, where is Vernon Street? Vernon Street's right off of Depot Street. If you go past Pins, be a first street at first and pretty much your own so street on your right. Before you hit the um, Saint Gobain plant? Yes. yes. So if you do Pins and Saint Gobain, you can find it's in the middle. Right in the middle, before you get the old pheasant run. Now, there are a number of cemeteries in Milford. Mm -hmm. We have uh, ones run by churches. We have Sacred Heart and St. Mary's. We have Pine Grove Cemetery over on 85, down by Wendy's that people tend to drive by and don't really notice it because it's a big, uh, low area in there. That's actually a functioning cemetery run by an independent group of trustees. It's private. We have the North Purchase Cemetery up on Purchase Street, which is really hidden. Uh, which we've taken over the maintenance of it several years ago. Which was the bane of our existence from, I'm sorry, but, you know, the Purchase Street, now that's not been open no, there, for a long time. No, there are no lots is, that I know of available there. We don't manage that, the financial end of it, but we don't sell the lots there. That's actually run by a group of uh, residents from up on Purchase Street, the North Purchase Street Trust, I believe it is, and they deal with the burials and all that, but they, I don't believe there's any available lots there. The only thing that they get up there for burials now is anyone that has a pre-existing lot. And it's basically, it started out as a family cemetery many moons ago, and now it's, you have to be up from that area. There's a few families that have a few plots left, so we take care of the mowing and the maintenance. But I was going to say, don't we, the complaints we used to get was that the grass was, you know, eight feet high or... What grass? There was a lot of moss up there, yeah. but uh, we, uh, we took that over a few years ago. It was part of a, going back about 10 years now, we had a plan at uh, the Vernon Grove Cemetery where we wanted to get our, our employees full time. Uh, we wanted to get some new equipment and we wanted to venture out and take care of the North Purchase Cemetery because our logic was you have park department taking care of a cemetery. We figure, why don't we put cemetery workers up at a cemetery. It made sense. And then the park department, to be fair, has plenty on their plate. The fields, there's, there's so many fields in this town. They had, then the bike path kept getting bigger and bigger and they maintained that. And You know, it, it was something they had to take care of that we could take off their plate. Well, I don't think Mike and his crew intentionally were shortchanging the cemetery. No, no. But it, when, you try and, when you have, you know, I, I, I deal with that in my, my career out in Northbridge because I'm in charge of all the fields out there. And when, you know, there's soccer tournaments on, you, the cemeteries get pushed aside, the little historic cemeteries, they do, it's unfortunate. Milford didn't have that problem because we had employees available that could take care of it. It cost the Pine Grove Cemetery a trailer to end up going up and taking care of North Burgess. It was not a big deal. The FinCom backed us 100%, and we've gotten a lot of compliments about it since, since that's taken over, yeah, just I, the upkeep of it. I just remember when Mike was saying, well, the residents of the Purchase Street Cemetery don't complain. The tenants. <laughs> the tenants don't complain, <laughs> but if I don't cut the grass at a field, uh, the people are extremely vocal. Very much so. And there's tons of people using Town Park, you know, Woodland. Well, now you don't have to cut much at Woodland. You don't have to cut much at Woodland now. But, you know, you can see the point to say, okay, it's easier. You have to prioritize. I mean, unfortunately, that does happen. Now, this being right before Memorial Day, cemeteries tend to take preference because yes. this is the high holiday coming up of cemeteries, Memorial Day. I mean, that's pretty much the benchmark. If 
you have in charge of cemeteries, you better have it up to par for Memorial Day weekend. And, you know, after that, not that it tails off. Of course it doesn't, because, you know, the 4th of July comes up after that. And then you, it, people are there every weekend. Their loved ones are there. I mean, but see, that's eternity, the point. When you, you know? sit there and say, the soccer game, if the grass is a little higher, eh, but if you're going out to see your mom, your grandmother, you don't really want to see large moss clumps or grass growing over. You don't want to see a, a footstone with a foot and a half of grass sticking up in front of it. You know, it, it, unfortunately it happens when you have to prioritize, but this town is in, in, in a position where it didn't have to. It just had to be reallocated, you know, I like to think of it. I mean, we weren't, not that they were doing a bad job, they just couldn't keep up to it, you know, and it's understandable. So we figured let us step in and do what we can do, you know, and everybody seemed to back it. And I, we've taken down some trees out there now with the help of uh, Chucky Renault, the tree wood, which has helped out. Got a little bit more uh, growing up there, which is good. It's tough to grow grass when there's trees everywhere. How big is the Purchase Street Cemetery? Purchase Street Cemetery, if I was going to take a stab at it, is probably a couple of acres at best, an acre and a half. It's it's not really that big. It's, it's on the small side. There's three roads in there, which, you know, and, and if... Another part of that was in the winter, I mean, the highway department, it didn't get plowed like it should. And part of the 10-year plan we had at Pine Grove with, I'm sorry, with Vernon Grove was uh, to get some equipment. And one of that was to get a new one-ton dump truck. Our one-ton was donated by Enron years ago when they first came to Milton I thought Bay. Paul Revere gave us that they, one. He was actually, he had just retired, <laughs> and then his, uh, who took over for him, actually got I was going to say, that was pretty up there in years. It was unbelievably up there in years, and it, it got to the point a couple years ago where they had a push started just to get it to roll, and it was not going to last. And, and, you know, it was one of those things that no one really paid attention to right up until we needed one. So we approached the finance committee in the town and said, listen, we want to get a new one time. We need it. We use it for leaves. We use it for hauling Gra uh, loom over there. It's a cemetery. You need a one-ton dump. Well, with that, we said, well, why don't we put a, a plow on it? Because years before, we used to pay uh, Molinari Incorporated. They used to come down and charge us, and they plow it and sand it. Or they plow it, I'm sorry. And then the town would come down and sand it. Well, then Mol Molinari is no longer in existence, so then we had to try and figure out how we were going to plow it. Then the town said they would plow it, but there's 125 miles in this town. Mm -hmm. The last thing, you know, it, it, once again, again, it's prioritized. Now you've got Scotty sitting there saying, do I do Congress Street or Ivy or Lane? Bring or off someone and send them down to the cemeteries. Right. You know, so face the same thing in Northbridge, okay? So what we decided was, let's see if we can get a one ton, and that way we can plow it. Then there'll be no issue. And with that, we'll go take care of the North Purchase Cemetery, North Purchase Cemetery as well, because that one was never getting plowed right up until there was a funeral. And I remember back when I worked, at the Milford Highway Department, they used to send you up there with the load of the day of a, if there was a funeral in the winter, and I mean, there'd be this much ice because it hadn't been touched, and, you know, once again, it slipped through the cracks. And uh, fortunately now, we've put all our ducks in a row with the help of the town and the backing of the Finance Committee, and uh, we now take care of those cemeteries in the winter as well, which works out nicely. Now I'm curious, they have a separate board of trustees? Yes, the North Purchase Cemetery does. It's, I don't believe it's a there's only a couple of them. I believe there's oh. three or four. I believe Marilyn Lovell's the head of it and her son, and there's a couple other members of it that, I mean, they used to take care of it themselves. They used to literally win. I was going to say, I don't remember them ever, sorry to interrupt, but I don't remember them ever coming to the FinCom for any funds they or... They don't have, they have a zero balance. It's it's a trust just by the lot seals that were in existence, I believe, many moons ago. I mean, they used to take care of it themselves. That's how it started. They'd bring up a mower from their from if they lived up there and they'd go in and they'd maintain it. Well, the old time has passed on and became tenants there and it didn't get taken care of by the following generations and it technically was a town cemetery, so they turned to the town, you know, and they had no other avenue to go to. But now, when somebody is interned, mm -hmm. there's an implicit understanding that somebody's going to take care of the cemetery. Yep. But what does that mean? Perpetual care. Right. It's part of what you pay for when you buy a plot in any given cemetery. And part of that is that once you a person is interred there, that the area above where they're resting will be perpetually taken care of. The lawn will be mowed. It'll be kept so you could at least go, family members can go visit it. You know, it won't become a forest. That's but now, care. how much does a lot typically cost? Well, it... I, 
Cemeteries are all over the place. Uh, really? I, I know there's ones, I was, uh, pardon me, the Vernon Grove Cemetery went up last year, and now it's $750 a lot. That's on the low end for cemeteries. Uh, normally they're in the eight to 900 and as much as $1,600 a lot, depending. We've always kept it low because we're a town cemetery. We have to be available. Well, you're taking money from our own people. Exactly. And being a town cemetery, we have to inter people that cannot afford to be interred. If they have no family or anything, it does. we deal with that a couple of times. I mean, and since I've been on the board, we've probably dealt with that six, six times, a half but now, times. But now, $1,000 for a piece of dirt, that's what, 10 foot by three foot? Uh, what are the dimensions? It's about 10 feet by 36 inches. By three feet. Yeah, give it to Okay, me. sounds like a lot of money if for a thousand bucks. Not if you think about how long you're going to be there. But that term perpetual, <laughs> yeah. you know, I start thinking about, okay, some of those lots are how old? You can go back and look at some of those lots. They're in the early 1800s. So if you start doing the math uh, monthly, they, they're getting a good deal on, yeah, on it, rent. How, do you, how does the cemetery, well, first of all, what is perpetual care? Perpetual care is just, there will always be upkeep where the body is interred. You know, uh, the grass will be taken care of, leaves will be picked up, it won't fall in disarray. If, if there's a, there'll always be loom on top, it won't collapse, we'll repair it. That's what cemeteries do, you know, it's their final place. You want to be able to keep places where relatives, ancestors, if you will, can, can go look at it and, you know, and, and, and take in the history of it, which now with the genealogy craze that's out there is we get more calls in all the cemeteries we deal with for people searching genealogies, they go to cemeteries. You know, it's one, one of their best avenues of information. You can track that down fairly easy. Now, I've read where some of the, I guess, private or commercial cemeteries mm -hmm. are worried about the cost of maintenance, so they don't let you put in these great big tombstones or monuments. Yep. We don't have those restri restrictions at our cemeteries. Uh, the way we look at it is you paid for that. As long as you can fit it in, you know, if you have two, three, four lots, you don't have to buy one. One's that size, but if you go two, four, however you want to lay it out, if you can fit your foundation. So I can buy bit, multiple pieces of dirt. Absolutely. That board and then dirt. have a larger monument. Yes. The, uh, back in the early 1900s, it was very popular to buy 10, 12 person lots. That Very popular. I mean, the was, whole family. And then some. And then some. So, you know, you'd have the, that's where you see these monstrous monuments. Well, they're in the middle, and you look, and there's probably 10 or 12 names on all four sides of that monument because there's uh. all lots around it. So, you know, it was their piece of real estate. You know, we don't maintain the monuments, that, that's private property. Uh, but in the same note, if it falls over, we'll make sure it gets back say, But wait a minute. If I put a monument there, yep. 20, 30 years go by, it's not unreasonable to think it's going to wear or start leaning. We, we keep up, we have a program at the Pine Grove every, every, I'm sorry, Vernon Grove every year. We apply for, we take some money out of our trusts and we do a section of the old slate stones that go back to the 1800s where there is no relatives left. And I mean, like you said, those lean, they fade. Well, those, that's a specialty to clean. We don't go in there and clean them with our employees because we could damage them. You need someone that knows you know, if you, if you have a leak, you don't call an electrician. You call the people that deal with that stuff. So there's companies that go, the last person we contracted was from New Hampshire that deals specifically in historical stones. And he comes down, he has this stuff he puts on it, cleans them up, stands them up into uh, stone dust and, and, you know, preserves them. That being said, it is still private property headstones, believe it or not. Uh, we don't... So I own the headstone if I put it there? Yes. So, I mean, the responsibility technically is mine to maintain it. We've got calls where, can you go in and clean our stone? We refer it back to the monument companies, be Ackerman or Whitensville Monument. We don't do that because if we damaged it, we're liable for it. Well, you can pay somebody to go clean it. We could. I mean, they could. If it's my stone, yes. I could call an Ackerman or Whitensville, whatever, well, and say, quite often, often. hey, guys, I don't, I don't know what they charge me to clean it, but... It's not. I'll be honest with you. I don't know the going rates for it. It's not astronomical. It's probably a hundred bucks. I'd say. Yeah, especially I, if you said, I'm go can I do it when I do 10 others? Exactly. You know, and, and they go in, they spray the stuff on it, it kills algae. And, you know, they have their system and different stones. You can't, some people just think you can go dump bleach on it. Well, if you do that on certain stones, you're going to damage them. You know, it's not as easy as, well, just go in and power wash it. 
that can do a lot of damage on I was going to say, as, as they get older and more... Very brittle. Brittle. Yes. But on top of that, if I'm just dumping random chemical, the grass that's around it... Now, that falls into ours, yes. Yeah, but all of a sudden, <laughs> if I start seeing brown grass, great, I got a pretty headstone, and now it looks like fecal matter is all around it. It looks like the Sahara. Yeah. <laughs> so we have Sacred Heart, mm -hmm. which right. Milfordians know that's is active. Yep. It, and that's funny because that's the Italian. That's the Italian cemetery, or the majority of... You know, it's always hard to explain to somebody who's not from Milford that we have two very large, you know, thousand seat <laughs> Roman Catholic churches, maybe a hundred yards apart. I'd say maybe uh, you could probably drive a golf ball, no problem. That's what I'm saying. No problem. You got to drive around, but if I ever took a string, I bet you I could reach it within a hundred yards. Probably. And then you have two different cemeteries. Because Sacred Heart is down by Route 109. 109. Yep. Um, St. Mary's is across, I can't, uh, Plain, if Plains I say Park. the dump, everybody gets mad. Plains Park, Rosenfeld Park. Rosenfeld Park. In, in Glacier Field, uh, <laughs> on um, Cedar Street. And that, again, is mainly, I would say, Catholic. Oh, yeah. Oh. And that tends to be Irish, Portuguese, Spanish. Yeah. What is Pine, the one across, Pine Grove? Pine Grove, that's a privately owned one. Uh, that goes back, I'd love to give you the history of it. I'm not really up on that cemetery, but it is still active. That is not affiliated with any particular church. They still do have burials there. It is, it, it, not that, often. But I thought it was them. closed. No, they you still know? have employees there. And it used to be three or four. They might be two well, no, but now. I figured they had employees to cut the grass and do it, the yeah. perpetual care thing, but... I've never... I've never heard that they are out of watch yet. I believe they're still... Well, active. but I mean, I've never gone in there. Yeah. Have, have you ever gone in with a Milfordian? No, I've never had a funeral. I've never gone to a funeral service there. In my That's family. what I was wondering. Oh. Who goes there? I, my family's yeah. Italian. We wouldn't be... Well, we'd be <laughs> sacred. <laughs> God bless when my... Um, one of my mother's girlfriends, Donna Clotilde Oliveira, when she took the long bus ride north, we went to the funeral... Yep. And amazed, we went down to Vernon Grove. It, it does but happen. apparently, I mean, she was 106. Mm -hmm. So when they bought the lots way, way back when, who knows what the you know, rationale was. But it was the strangest feeling because my mother looked at me. <laughs> and there's no malice in my mother's no. heart, but she goes, She's a wonderful do lady. you feel it? And I knew what she was talking I said, yeah, no vowels. <laughs> <laughs> as silly as it sounded... I'm looking around, and none of the names oh. ended in a vowel. I said, I don't think, you know, we're in the wrong part of Kansas, Mom. <laughs> Are we still in Milford? <laughs> still, yeah. Yeah, it is, it's not, we have a fairly large Armenian population down at Vernon Grove. Uh, wide open, honestly. Uh, a lot of con congregational church have uh, a foothold in it. There's no one denomination. There really isn't. There really is not. It's, we've had Italians, we've had Irish, we've had... Well, you had a Portuguese. Everybody. Yep. Donna Cotilda was Portuguese yep. as the day is long, and there she was amongst <laughs> all the consonants. How did the cemetery look when you went down there? Was it all right? Oh, it looked great. Beautiful. It's, and see, that's a good thing. It as looked long great. As you go down there, you can see that we're doing our job down there, our employees are, because that's who does it. You know, it's, it's the employees. Yeah, we're board, we're trustees, we do the leg work to get the, you know, the, the financials and all, sell the lots and all that. But it's the guys that are down there, our two employees, two and a half employees down there. They're the ones that do it. Well, I remember when we made the decision to bring them on full time. Yep. Because to me, it was the silliest thing in the world to hire them and lay them off every year. And then pay them almost the same from the town end all winter. Yeah. And then have to pay them to get off the books when it was because people do pass away in the winter, believe it or not. Yes. They, then they we had to bring them in there. as contractors at a premium. Exactly. But I don't think people understood. You know, we're used to an in industry and mm -hmm. in commercial. A certain percentage of the pay you get goes into an unemployment pool. And then if you get unemployed. if you get laid off, you dip in the pool. It doesn't work like that municipal. Municipal, <laughs> we pay nothing into the pool, but if we lay somebody off. At the end of the quarter, the state sends us a bill, dollar for dollar. Mm -hmm. 
And it's virtually what they'd be making if they were. It was like 60, 70%. Yeah. So I'm sitting there saying, wait a minute. From a personal point of view, this is cool. <laughs> I can have three, four months off. Make the same thing. Right? The Basically getting the same 60, 70%. But then they call me in. So I make up what I'm missing, mm -hmm. either plowing or di you know, digging, doing internments. Yeah, the internments, yeah. And I don't have to go to work for three, four months. And then from a business point of view, it didn't make much sense. No, not from the <laughs> town. I'm like, wait a minute, if I'm going to pay them anyway. Have more. And we worked out at the end with the highway department, and they, now with the one ton, they went right to work for the highway department. Now you have more town employees running town equipment, plowing town streets. You know, it, it, it was a win-win. I, I well, think but the thing the was, board. we were paying them anyway. anyway. You know, it's not even I want to increase payroll, mm -hmm. because that's never been a goal. No. I want more people to pay. No. But if I'm paying you, I want to make it so you can work 40 hours a week. Yes. Yes. And, you know, I, I remember we had all sorts of issues that, I mean, rightfully so. Somebody goes down to see their mom, their dad, mm -hmm. to pay respects, and something's not right or it's, the grass is too high. People take that very personally, as they should. I mean, we're in the business of taking care of your mom and your dad and, and unfortunately anybody else in your family for the rest of my life, our lives, and while we're here to go visit and beyond that. And, you know, people take that very personally. And, and it's a conversation no one wants to have. It's one of the toughest things to, to sell somebody and bring them to a spot where that's where they're going to, they're looking down at where they're going to get buried. No one wants to face that. It's, you know, that's <laughs> human nature. You know, I mean, if I wanted to think about my family before I get to the point where I need it. It's probably something I should go do. I, I would say so, because a lot of times, I, I, I deal with this once again in, in my job as well as Vernon Grove, that people come right after somebody passed and they're looking for a, a lot. And that's probably the toughest time to make any sort of a decision anyway. You know, I, I would encourage people to, as much as you don't want to, take a look at that or at least have something planned for when that comes. Because so if I want to go down and I'm going to say, Hopefully, I'm taking the bus ride north. I, I, I if, so. if when I show up at the terminal, they give me suntan lotion, I'm going to get a little nervous here. One million SPF? Yes. <laughs> One million, yes. Yeah, but what, what do you mean this thing's heading south? Uh, well. But, okay, so you're saying price-wise, mm -hmm. it's really not a huge disparity. I mean, a few hundred, couple hundred bucks here or there. All the cemeteries in Milford are going to be about the same. All things being equal, they're very close. Seven fifty to I mean, maybe a thousand. Okay, maybe, so within a couple hundred bucks. Yes. Okay. Now, I'm born and raised St. Mary's. I never thought to even look at another cemetery. I would automatically go to St. Mary's. But if I wanted to be objective, okay, I got four choices. Mm -hmm. What would be the options I should ask about? I mean, am I under a shady tree? I, I don't know that I'm going to care. Some people, when they, they, they prefer things like that, those are the questions that come up. Do you have anything near a tree, anything near a pond, anything, you know, in, in some of the other cemeteries I deal with, it overlooks a ball field. Is there anything over a ball field? Things like that. It do, those questions do come up. And, you know, you look at the maps and you see what's available. What's beautiful about Vernon Grove is there's always employees there during the week that can answer those questions and take you around and show you what's available. That's a huge benefit. But you know, I could see, not that I'm worried about looking at the pond, because mm -hmm. I think by the time I move in, that's not going to be on my mind. <laughs> but <Ocean> being, <laughs> being in a nice shady place, I would think would be nice, hopefully my family will come and visit. Yes, that's the goal. That's the goal, that's the goal. right? So if I pick a shady place or a nice view, it's just going to make it more pleasant for them. Of course. of course. I mean, in shady places, the grass tends to grow better because it's not in direct sunlight. I mean, there's a lot of, unfortunately, sometimes in the shady places, there's trees. And we all know what was underneath trees are tree roots that can make digging an adventure sometimes. You know, it, it, if you dig too much around trees, sometimes the roots- You'll kill the tree. Kill the tree, so by you getting your shade, it might not always be there. Do the know? roots ever pose a problem for the, uh, the, the internment? 
Now, not as much because these companies that, we, that, that come in and do the internments, they use mini excavators. So it's not like back in the day when they used to have the gentleman that worked at the and cemetery. Sitting there picking away for Three a... guys go in the hole, dig, dig, dig for a little while, throw it up, three more guys go down. It was more of an issue then. Now with machinery. But now I'm just thinking as the roots grow, do they push anything up or go through? No, we've never had that situation because okay. you're in Cape... The vaults are concrete, so I mean it would take one hell of a root to push up a concrete vault. I, you know, if anything that tends to collapse on the sides more than anything uh -huh. else in the spring, I've never had one push up. Now, are there bunk beds available or? You cannot stack full burials in Massachusetts. That's uh, illegal. A lot of it was because of OSHA, because of the depth that you'd have to dig. Oh! You have to put a digging box in. How do you get out a digging box when there's a vault in there? It makes it look like a construction site as opposed to a burial site. I didn't know you couldn't have multiple. You cannot double stack. Now, that being said, there's a catch to that. You can have a full burial and put cremations on top of a full burial, which is becoming very popular in this day and age. Now, I'm reading that cremation is becoming more and more popular. Very much so, yes. Uh, cost? Is that really the... It's cost-driven, yes. I mean, uh, cremation burial costs you a couple hundred dollars as opposed to our cemetery is 500, anywhere from 500 to 575, depending if it's a weekday, weekend, holiday. So the winter. dirt costs you about a grand. Yep. 600 bucks to do it. it. Yeah, and then you have your funeral costs, which is separate. I was going to say, but the coffin and... That's all separate. That's all on, I mean, that... Whatever Who knows what that costs? Same thing with monuments. That's all separate. So, I mean, you, you, you're talking, I mean, you know, funerals cost. Are monuments expensive? Dollars. Monuments are astronomical, but it's what you'd like. You can spend anywhere from $1,000 to $20,000 if you so prefer it. Wow. A lot of money in those stones. A lot of money in those stones. Now. Milford's always had nice stones because all the pink granite, too. So. Yeah. <laughs> We've always had very nice stones. You'd have to have pink granite. If you're from Milford, you, you, you got to have our own. Bylaws, huh? Yeah, you got to have our own. I mean, it's like, you know, think about when we had a problem with Stacy. Mm -hmm. The most cost efficient, you know, if you approach it from pure analytical, mm -hmm. knock the dang building down, put up an ugly glass and steel building. Seems uh, yes. And it would have been cheaper. CMU buildings. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been cheaper. But it's not Milford. Is but it's it? not Milford. Right. That's, right. you know, somehow... Taking down Stacy, just, I mean, my hats are off to the consiglies for saving St. Mary's. They did a fantastic job with that, re re repurposing that and how they took it down and numbered it. That, that was a monumental undertaking, and they did it swiftly and efficiently, and it was like nothing ever. Yeah, it's but I mean, there's a story that you're really proud. I mean, not only Milford kids that have done well, mm -hmm. a Milford family that's done well. But Milford family and kids who are also helping the town. That's what it's supposed to be about, I, I would hope. You know, I, I, there's things now that the Milford family, Milford people trying to help with repurposing schools to keep some of the, the history. facade, the history of it. I mean, Milford's a changing place. It, it is. It's not, I mean, not that I'm that old, but it's not the same place it was when I was born. It has matured. Yes. But you still have to keep the history as best as you can so we don't lose our, our, our culture and our face and what, what it is. Well, you know, it's funny because I went to my ungrateful offspring number one <laughs> and I told her, I said, congratulations, you are now officially a Milfordian. And she looks as, how's that? I said, you're third generation Milford oh. and you live within two miles of your mother. Yeah, you you got to have that second part in there. <laughs> if you want to be a real Milfordian, you can't be more than two miles away from mom. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you start thinking about the tradition. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I got really nervous when I, moved, I left Milford for 10 years. Yeah. I came back from Paris and um, West Street School, where I started, yeah, probably parking lot. Yeah. It's all grass. Oliver Street, where it went second through five? That's apartment. Apartment. Yep. Spruce Street, gone, now a library. Yep. Stacy was boarded up. <laughs> I started getting nervous about this. <laughs> so, you know, when the town made the decision to keep a little bit of our tradition yep. and keep Stacy alive, I felt really good. I agree with you. You know, and if we keep doing what we do, if our department heads, 
Uh, my hat's always off to them when we do our budgets, because if you look at what FinComs around the area have to deal with. I see it every day in my, my job, my career. Right. It's, it's, it's amazing when you step out of Milford, you truly appreciate what we have going for us. Well, it's hard when, I, when people say, well, what's the big problem we're going to have at town meeting? Mm -hmm. Discussing how to allocate the surplus. Imagine that's a problem. You know, in other towns, surrounding towns, they're figuring out which departments and within the schools they want to lay off. What can we do without? And, and, and I mean, we, we benefit a lot from our location, which is fantastic. We have two exits to 495. It makes it. Yeah, but we really benefit because the people who are running, you know, the departments, mm -hmm. they care. Mm -hmm. You know, and they, they don't. I mean, we always think they, everybody spends too much money. Yes. And we charge too much for taxes. Yes. But when you really look at what we get done, mm -hmm. pretty proud. I'd say this town has done fantastic with just about, you know, not every decision, but I'd say pretty close to every financial decision this town's made in the last, going back about 20 years, I think was a positive. I, I can't see too many negative. Yeah, there's some, some blips across yeah. the way that happens. Construction projects don't always go as planned. Right. Uh, purchases don't always go as planned. But overall, if you look at how we can still fund our departments and the capital that we're putting back into the town and how it's growing, I think we're doing great. Now, if you were coming to Milford, being objective, mm -hmm. you know about cemeteries. Yes, I do. You're going to go buy your lot. Okay. What would influence your decision? It can't be price because you're saying that's about the same. It's about the same. If I came in not, not affiliated with the church and I just was looking at cemeteries, I would look at what the cemetery looks like, the upkeep. It's, it's the easiest thing to look at. You pull down into a cemetery, if you see high grass, you see bushes that aren't attended to, you see headstones leaning over, you see a sloven area, you see roads that you can't drive down, that's what I'd base it on. But do we have any of the, I mean, I've never been in Pine Grove, mm -hmm. but we've gone to interments at Sacred Heart, mm -hmm. at St. Mary's. It seems pretty good. They're very good. We're very fortunate that we have cemeteries in this town that are on a level playing field. I mean, a lot of times it comes down to which church you're affiliated with in this town. I mean, that's really what it is. Cost, it's, it's, it's fairly equal, you know, it's not that. And it, like we said earlier, all the cemeteries are on pretty level footing when you, you've been to interments everywhere. They're, they're pretty good. Now, uh, I believe a few years back, St. Mary's redid all their, their roads because yes. they, they needed to be done. We're starting to look at that at Vernon Grove. It's time, it's time for us to go into those roads I uh, need some asphalt. We're looking at it long term, but we've we've done everything according to our capital plan over the last dozen years or so. We needed mowers. We got a mower, then we got a one ton, then right. we got another mower. It's it's all in steps. And if we stay within the steps and the money that the, the FinCom will allow us for capital without asking too much, we're not going to come down and say, hey, can we have $250,000 to pave the roads in one year? No, of course not. Of course not. That's not realistic. That $250,000 has to go to the schools, to the regular right. road. There's other things that that's allocated. Well, to. I mean, what you brought up about the cemeteries at St. Mary's was perfect case. Mm -hmm. The cemetery needed help. Yes. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you got Maria Mariah stepping up. Mm -hmm. You've got the Braza family. I mean, I can go through a whole list of people who said, okay, we'll help. It took a village. It took a it village. Took a village. You know, in the village of Milford all got together mm -hmm. and all of a sudden now we've got nice roads and the Beautiful. place looks nice. Yeah, and I, I, they just fixed a wall out in front too over the last couple of years. I noticed I happened to go down there to go to games across the street and notice that was repointing because that's a beautiful wall. That was not coming into falling apart, but it had some rough And areas. we got that Irish round tower. The only one in, I believe, outside of Ireland right. in history. Uh, but you know, it's kind of neat that you sit there and say, okay, well, we got one. Yeah. Do we care? Well, yeah, it's Milford. Of course, it's historic. That's you know, I mean, I'm not going to go there and have a picnic, but <laughs> it's kind of nice to have I'm it there. Picnic in cemeteries, come on. <laughs> Good news, it'd be quiet. Yes, it is. Very peaceful. So, my tenants are complaining. We have a real issue. Oh, yeah. We have a real issue. I think issue. I saw a late night movie about that. <laughs> I don't want to bring that to the FinCom. I really don't think they want to deal with that one. But now we turn around and you say, okay, so I come down to Vernon Grove. And you got employees. Yes. And I say, I want to buy you some dirt. Sure. Uh, do they walk me around? And They'll I do anything they can to help you. Well, do you have a particular area you'd like to look at? You know, uh, what? 
how many lots are you looking for? Because then uh, they, they'll know if the, you know if you want to get four lots. Well, there's probably only certain sections that have four, four lots together. Contiguous lots. Exactly. So you know they, they have asked those questions. They'll bring you around and probably show you some options. And then from there it goes to Lynn Lovell, who's the clerk, and she, she goes down there as well and will help. I out. think Lynn's the only one that knows every single Lynn stone. Lynn knows everything about every cemetery from here, I think, to Johnston, Rhode Island. I believe. I think she's cataloged all of them. It, it's amazing. I, I I take care of the South Hopedale Cemetery in Hopedale myself, and I've gone to her with questions on stuff. It's it's amazing. What in Woodbridge, same thing. She's cataloged down there, so. I've called her for questions regarding. Is this going in a database yet, or she has a database and a, on her computer that we can access? And you know, we're trying to catch up a little bit more on the modern stuff of Lynn, but she is an absolute wealth of information. Well, no, I mean, as long as Lynn's there, yes, I have no I worries. Hope she's there forever, or at least as long as I'm on the board, because I, when she, unfortunately someday when she's no longer there, they're gonna we're gonna all the cemeteries are gonna miss something from her. It, it's true. It really is true. She's an absolute wizard with that stuff. Now, it costs us more to maintain Vernon Grove because we don't have restrictions on tombs, stones, and things on that line, right? I don't think it costs any more. Uh, I mean, if you figure every lot has two, two, every headstone has two lots. But if there were no headstones, like some of these new commercial cemeteries just have flat Flat markers have markers. to be trimmed. If you just mow oh. flat markers, eventually that grass and weeds and everything else grow this way instead of this way. Oh, so you actually okay. have to edge those this way. I thought they were doing that to get rid of the edging. Oh. Oh. Then why don't they want... It's like anything else. Architecture changes. Okay. You know, collabariums are becoming very popular. We have one down at Vernon Grove. That was right before I got on the board, about a dozen years ago, they purchased a collabarium. Now, a collabarium is an above ground structure, stone, where they have sections of it where you place two urns. And for $800, you get the two urns and a beautiful bronze marker in the front of it that says anything you'd like. That's becoming very popular. We've sold a lot of those in the last few years. So that's just a big, I hate to say mailbox looking thing. Yes, a big stone mailbox big. looking thing with you know a little bit of metal with bronze. I was gonna say, it. it's just, a place, it looks like a bunch of mailboxes in a big city. It all comes down to what your personal preference is. Some people want a full burial. Some people don't want to be cremated. They, 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 they do not want anything to even think about that. They don't want to go underground. They want to be above ground. I mean, these are all issues that are personal. And cemeteries are in the business, and, and undertake, um, funeral directors are in the business of catering to that. You know, everybody has different wants for their final resting well, I know when we went to Portugal to see my dad, there, it's a full, it almost looks like the casket sits above, above ground, ground. Okay. in a marble structure. Well, it, it, a lot of that comes down to history. Portugal's history goes back a lot further than America's, so our, our history goes back to, I mean, let's face it, before the cemeteries were set up, it was probably the 1700s. Yeah. There's some earlier ones, you know, I know in North Virginia, the old Quaker Cemetery where goes back into the real early 1700s, late 1600s, where it's just a... But you're not going back any further stone. than that. You're not going any further than that. So we don't have to stack a cemetery on top of a cemetery on top of a cemetery. Europe does. They've been people in those lands for thousands and thousands of years. America, we will, besides for the Native Americans, have only been here for a couple thousand years. Now, there's areas, you know, when you go down to Louisiana and all, that they can't dig. Because the water table, the water table's too high. It'll just float everything up. We don't have that issue in New England. Our biggest issue in New England is not hitting ledge. That's oh. an issue. It does happen. Milford Pink Granite. You do. You'd be surprised that you know, even in, in an area where it was a, a river, uh, river area, river washout area like Vernon Grove, where it's basically sandy, you'll still run into ledge. And you know, when you have to get a vault into that space because that's where you're going next to the loved one, it's got to go in there. So there's been situations where the company has to split the stone. Jackhammer, and jackhammer it. it and Cause you're not gonna like, the houses up where we are, they blasted ledge. You're not gonna blast it. I'm gonna say, <laughs> it'd be a kind of problem to put. Some people might complain about that. The tenants might complain that. I'm gonna say, I mean, the vibration alone may cause you some. There's a little room where you can slide over if you have to, but you know, in all the, in all the years I've been in this, there's never been a situation we couldn't get a grave in. Some are easier than others. Some are a bit of a challenge, 
but they've gotten in there. They've gotten in there so far. Now, how full are we at Vernon Grove? Vernon Grove, I'd say right now we have around 8,000 plus tenants. I say that because years ago, I, like I said earlier, we have to take in people that have no funds to inter themselves. So back in the old days or several decades ago, they used to put them on the outlier of the cemeteries, you know, the, the areas where people didn't want to purchase lots. So there's, there's people interred there that there's no headstones, there's no way to track it. So I say 8,000 and along with that, they used to have baby lots. Do they get a marker? Back then they don't, they do now. <laughs> Back then, they, say, they, they don't even get a marker. Not back then. No, things were a little different. Now they do. We do supply them with a marker. It's a small little marker, but it does the final resting place is marked. But back in the old days, they didn't. They just, How did you know that somebody was there? I'll be honest with you. There's really no way to track that. They just dug them on the edges and. But I was going to say, wouldn't it be a little concerning that if I don't mark it, that if I start digging, all of a sudden. You could bump into somebody else that I already moved in there. It, it does happen. I mean, not often. Not often. I mean, today you would know because I'm assuming that everybody that's interned mm -hmm. has to have a cement That was back vault. in the 70s. That became code. Yes. So yeah, whatever that. you're putting in, whatever you decide for a casket, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. You're getting a cement vault. Yes. Yep. So if you start digging in the wrong place, you're going to hit the vault. You're going to know real quick. You're going to know once you get down about this deep that, yeah, no, this we're occupied. Oh, that deep. We're, we're occupied. They're only three feet deep? The top of it. Don't forget, it's six feet down, and the vault's about 32 inches. Oh. So then you've got the cover that's Whenever they inches, said so six feet out. down, I always assumed the top was six feet no, down. that's the bottom. That's the bottom. So then you start working up this way. So you're not really six feet down. Well, yeah. Ground level you are. So... Certain areas of the country allow double and triple stack. I, I'm sure not, just not Massachusetts. That became an OSHA situation. If you went down so many feet, now you had to have digging boxes and all that. And What's a digging box? Digging box is when you go down so that when you're digging and there's someone in there, it holds It doesn't back. fall. It, it doesn't collapse. It holds back the material, the gravel, the dirt, whatever you will, so it doesn't. Well, who wants to look at a digging box when you're drop, you know, lowering a loved one in there? And it makes it a little bit difficult to pick up a digging box after there's someone in there. You know, it's, it wasn't a safe situation, so they outlawed them. Now, we went to one, I think it was Sacred Heart, where I got to admit, I kind of liked it when we went into a, like a little building. I love that now, yes. You go into the outdoor chapels. The outdoor chapels. Yep. And you paid your last respects. We put down the flower. Yes, I love that. Because... I got to admit, it gives me the heebie-jeebies to see a loved one. I know it's going to happen. Just, it's tough to watch. You know, somebody's going to lower that casket mm -hmm. into the ground. I guess I'm too old. I, I'm getting too close to my reservation. Come on. You've got a long time left. <laughs> From your mouth to God's ears. But, <laughs> you know, you start looking at it, and it kind of felt weird. Of course, no one wants to see that. I mean, I shouldn't say no one. It's, it's tough to even... For most people to consider that. No one wants to see their loved one lowered. They, of course not. I love how they do it at chapels now. Vernon Grove does not have a chapel. Uh, I'm not saying we never will. It's just right now we don't. It's never come up in a discussion of, or a need for anyone that has burials there. They, they haven't mentioned that they wanted one. We could entertain it if it became an issue, but it hasn't yet. So we continue with how they've been doing it for decades. Yeah, I don't remember St. Mary's having one. No, I don't but think But I they do have. believe Sacred, Sacred Heart has does. it because I've been to that one. No. And that was just kind of nice. I, I like that. But that's once a personal preference. It, that yeah. comes down to personal preference. Some people, even after the chapel at, at uh, Sacred Heart, I know there's people that have actually gone and waited and wanted to go see one. Mm. But no, I think I'll, um, I'll assume. That's, you see, that, that, that comes down to it. It's personal preference. You but know? now you have a cement vault, uh, cement box, that correct. you're saying is three, three feet high. Yes. Certainly. Casket goes in. Mm -hmm. And then a heavy cement lid. Yep. Is it sealed or? No, it's just compression, just the weight of the ground. It's it's not going to go anywhere. Well, no, no, I'm just curious, you know. No, it's not sealed. It's just a concrete block that you can put on top of a lid and then it's backfilled. Because the synthetic material, that casket's going to last a long time. Yes. And then you just fill it with dirt. And in Massachusetts, you're never going to open it or undig it. Um, 
that does happen. Why? Uh, if some, I can't double stack, what, what would be the rationale? There to... has been situations where people want to move their loved one from one cemetery to another. Doesn't happen often, but it happens. We had a request of that. Oh, it happened actually in Northbridge. It happened two years ago that someone wanted to take someone out and move them. It, as it turned out, it didn't happen because they found out what the cost was, but it, it is an option. I mean, it, you mean I I, do. I've got a loved one someplace in Vernon Grove, and I want to move them to somewhere else. Yeah. That's interesting. It, it, you have to get a special permit from the state on that one, but it... It I would hope so, but it can happen. It, it, like well, I, I said, I had this conversation and looked into technically it because possible because you're just going to lift the cement lid and take out the. Oh, you're going to take out the casket. Yes. Oh, I thought you'd take out the whole cement no, box. No, the vault ain't going to go anywhere. That'd be locked in by then. You that would be because you figure when those oh. vaults are in it, there's ones right next to them. You could never. You could never it shimmy out. it out. I, that I wouldn't even. I couldn't imagine what that would be like to try. <laughs> so unless you have a plain wooden box, it's. They have been playing wooden boxes in a lot of years since the, I believe the mid '70s is when they changed over. Because I was to thinking, that. you know, the wood would deteriorate to that, nothing. It, it does happen in older cemeteries. That's when you see the ground start goes, and it does. It happens. It happens. Unfortunately, so like you said wood gives way. Today you don't have it because whatever happens to the casket. The biggest problem you have today with the vaults is if they don't go down deep enough, because then if they only go down with about this much coverage. That heat from the sun heats up that concrete and cooks the grass. It's almost like an inverter. Oh, my God. That's why you see areas on top of graves that no matter what you do, you can't get grass to grow because it's actually heating up from the ground up. you got to get enough of coverage in there. And, you know, for a while, certain cemeteries, and it was, they weren't going down as much as, as far as they'd have to because they were hitting ledge or, you know, they don't want to oh, go all the way. You go down five feet, you hit ledge, yeah, you say, good enough. nobody's going to complain. You put on and there's only about this much coverage and you can't get grass to grow there because it's and you have an internal heat. heater exactly. killing the grass. So, you know, you try and put more loom on top of it, more seed, and <laughs> with any luck and time it will take, but that's a common problem. So now you mentioned a couple times that there's cases where people pass on in town, mm -hmm. um, unknown, I won't say unloved, but just... No, just no family left. No family, no... Uh, um, John and Jane Doe's of good okay. names, what we'll just call it that for all intents and but, purposes. John Doe passes on. Yeah. Uh, now what happens? In our bylaws, being a town cemetery, we have to inter that. Uh, that means we eat the cost of the lot and provide the burial service for... But they go to a funeral home or...? Funeral director will take care of it because it will come out of the... Uh, oh, excuse me, the coroner. <laughs> The coroner will contact a funeral home, and it goes okay. through that. And, so the uh, coroner has a budget from the state to pay for John Doe. Exactly. No frills. They're from Milford, your town cemetery. Provide a lot. So I'll buy the coffin. The, the vault. We the don't supply the vault. So I'll Both buy the coffin, the, the vault, as a coroner. Yeah, and we'll provide the, the, the dirt. The and dirt and the, someone to remove it and backfill it. We do, Vernon Grove actually goes above and beyond. You know, a lot of times they still have to find someone to pay for the fee or the state has to pay for the fee for the interim. We, we do that as a courtesy. For a town cemetery, we've always done it. I mean, do we have a choice? Not really. It, what are you going to say, no? That's our point. The coroner delivers. Here you go. <laughs> Oh, we'll just leave them on the side of the cemetery for a while. I don't think the Board of Health would like that one too much. And then we'd get them involved. It's, yeah, no, we don't want to do that. Yeah, I can see Paul having a couple objections yeah, to I, say, hey, I Jamie, don't, uh, don't think anyone would you like can't that. leave any of your new friends sitting around for a long time. No, 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 no. Years ago, I remember we had issues. Um, I mean, when we were kids, if you wanted to go have a long discussion with a friend, yes. you know, Bear Hill, U Turn, uh, the everything. Grove, there was room, yeah. you know, that you could take a book and go have a long discussion. Yeah, discuss the world's problems, uh, the Vietnam All of a sudden, get. all those areas, I mean, you know, when you say U-turn, because I live up right where the U-turn was. <laughs> I remember the U-turn. Um, no U-turn anymore. No U-turn anymore. You know, and you sit there and say, okay, so the kids who want to have long discussions or whatever, 
they were turning to the cemeteries, weren't they? Yes. Yeah, it's it's an I don't want to call it an ongoing problem. We've had we've been very fortunate we haven't any major issues with that. We did put in a security camera several years back. That way we can track who's coming in and out of there. That way if there ever was an issue that arose over a weekend or when there was nobody there, at least we could get the camera footage who was coming in and out, it would narrow down. We could see who whose in. cars were in. Exactly. I mean, is it a perfect system? No, but at least it's something. No, but okay, it's Lynn Lovell. No, she probably wasn't there to she, vandalize. She probably, you know, yeah. we've had a few, and since I've been on the board of Knock on Wood, we have not had issues of vandalism. They're very minor. Uh, unfortunately, we have, I mean, with the op op opioid epidemic we have now, there is a lot of needles that get That's what down. I was going to say. The, the scary part is, the people who aren't thinking straight. If I'm a druggie, uh -huh. I mean, we put in a fence. Um, Sue Edmonds came and convinced us we had to do the fence because the druggies were coming behind the library okay. and leaving, you know, needles, needles and stuff. I mean, this year we have to go and buy. I mean, as much as I, you know, hate to talk about it, but we have to go buy a leaf plow for our walker mowers that we have the employees. Because back in the day, those big wind rows of leaves, and you go kicking it through it. Well, in those leaves now, there's a lot of needles, and we don't want our employees oh. to get accidentally stuck by any of them. So now they make these, they're, they're plows for leaves that we can mount onto the tractors, and it's small money, and they can push it with the plow as opposed to the old days when you used to kind kick of go it through and, it, yeah. kick it to move a big pile. You don't want to do that anymore because there's a lot of needles. It's, un it's unfortunate that that's what it's come to, but that's what it's come to. We don't want to put our, our employees in harm, anybody in harm's Well, way. no. I mean, I, I took but my daughter just... down at Vernon Grove, and that's where she learned how to ride a bike because it yeah. was safe. No, but I'm thinking it's not even, I mean, obviously the employees we want to watch out for, but if you've anybody. got somebody going down to, to pay respects to a family member, you want to make sure there's no... That's part of the beauty of having people there five days a week in most weeks because they can monitor that. They come in the morning, they take a ride around and see if there's any problems that arose. A lot of cemeteries don't have that luxury. We're very fortunate to have that. And the employees are great employees. They, they take it to heart down there. I mean, they call us with any sort of a problem and you take care of it. Let's get it well, done. Well, I mean, God bless them because if they didn't, you'd know right away. Very quickly. You know, it's very not quickly. like people who go down if they see bad things they're not going to hide their, 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 their feelings if they don't feel their perpetual care money is being spent right. But again, it amazes me. $1,000. Oh. Forever. 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 Right. And if you think back in the day, those same lots that are 750 or, you know, total 1000 now, back then might have been $30. But even if there was $1,000 in today's money, it's Still been, nothing. that's a buck and a half a year. <laughs> you I cannot be, nobody's moving in down there, please. We're <laughs> not taking land that you can put tents up. It, we don't work that way. But uh, <laughs> How full is the cemetery? We are probably available, I'd say, because we just mapped out a new area about three years ago. We had it surveyed. We have at least 800 lots there available. And in the lots... Where we're at, we probably have that, if not more. And don't forget, you can go into all these lots and put cremations on top of previous oh, okay. lots, which is becoming very popular with the younger generation now that they're going to, they want to be buried with their grandma. They're being cremated. They want to go on top. They've already paid so for the So if lot. you've got roughly 2,000 lots left, mm -hmm. we've used up 8,000. So we've used up 80% of the cemetery I'd say about three quarters. I, in you know, 200 years. The, we're not going to run out of space in our lifetimes. I can guarantee that. I can guarantee That's, uh, that. You know, I'm kind of thinking, okay, do we, we still have many Long years. Long way to go before we even have. We'll never have to address that problem. I can virtually guarantee you that. I mean, barring any, I don't even, I can't even, I don't want to think about what it could take right. to fill that up but it will never happen in our lifetime. So what do you see the biggest challenges for the cemetery being? Biggest challenge for the cemetery, I would say, uh, right now, I, you know, in a practical level is we gotta look at taking care of our roads. We have to address our roads. We're coming up with plans where we're probably in the next year or so you're gonna hear from us maybe looking for a uh, $30,000 for asphalt 
year one, year two, once we go in and get an estimate of what it's going to take to go in there. That, that, that's going to be the next big thing coming uh, on our plate anyway, you know. And like I said, it's not practical for us to come down and say, hey, we want a quarter of a million dollars to, to bang this all out in one year. No, but if you know it's going to be 150 grand, mm -hmm. one way to look at it is to go to the capital committee and say, do you want to schedule 150 grand in four years? Or can we put 30 grand a year in, in style. Yep. You know, and have town meeting approve 30 grand and it goes into a fund yep. that when we get to 100, we can spend it. You can go. You know, because it may be a lot cheaper hey. to do it all at once. Yes, and uh, you know, I, I shy away from that for one reason. If we go and get 30,000, just, I'm just using a blanket number here, $30,000, and we can pave five of the roads in there with the $30,000, that's five rows of people are going to come in and, you know, obviously yeah. the plan where you start. You're going to start at the beginning and work. So, oh, there's 30000 Look what that got. Now, you know, the following sure. 30 days. Sure. I just want to make put sure. Put it away, put it away, put it away, and then eventually. If you got five roads and it costs you one hundred fifty grand, that doing five individuals doesn't cost two fifty. Two fifty. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, yeah. so What's look at the numbers and say, you know, if it's an extra 10 or 15, well, that's cost of capital. Of course. So. Of course. L any last words for the people about the cemetery? I would just like to say, uh, if you have a chance, go down and take a look at Vernon Grove Cemetery. I think you'd be pleasantly surprised at what it looks like down there and the, and the care that our employees have. If you have any questions, we're online. We can be reached at the Milford, uh, through the Milford website. And uh, feel free to go down. It, it's a beautiful place. It's very popular for jogging and walking down there. Really? Very popular for that. Uh, a lot of kids go down there and learn how to drive their cars. Uh, fortunately, there's been no issues with that. And people go down and ride their bikes, but it's very popular for walking down there. It's a beautiful area, and I encourage everybody to go out and take a look at it, and you'll see some of the history in Milford. And I would love to thank you, and it's always a pleasure to sit down it's and chat with you. great to see you. Anytime I get to sit down with you for an hour and chat, it's a pleasure is all mine. Thank you for taking care of Grandma, Grandpa, and everybody else that is what in people's family. Do. So what we're here to do. As always, I hope you've learned a little bit more about Milford and what we offer. Um, there are a number of cemeteries. All of them have their unique character. Uh, it's a topic nobody wants to ever think about or talk about. Uh, but let's hope that when the day comes, it's a trip north, and you don't get suntan lotion <laughs> and get worried. But all kidding aside, we take a lot of pride in our town. And this is one of the reasons. So to our six loyal viewers, may God bless. And may tomorrow be a better night than tonight. Thank you. Not too long since I've been home.